We do know that in a patient with a posterior polar cataract, we always need to do a hydrodelineation. The reason why we avoid a hydrodissection is because if the hydro wave went between the posterior polar opacity and the posterior capsule, there is a significant possibility of the posterior capsule giving way. And therefore, we perform a hydrodelineation wherein we delineate the endonucleus which then needs to be downsized and emulsified. Now in this following video, I'd like to demonstrate the differences noted whilst performing hydrodelineation in a soft as well as in a hard posterior polar cataract. Let's start with watching the hydrodelineation procedure in a patient with a soft polar cataract. Now here's a patient with a posterior polar cataract with a very early nucleosclerosis. Let's move to watching the hydrodelineation. Now prior to performing the hydrodelineation, I decompress the anterior chamber by pressing on the posterior lip. After which, the hydrocannula is introduced well into the substance of this rather soft cataract and a wave of fluid injected. This results in a successful hydrodelineation, which is evident here, as you can see, by the appearance of the golden ring. So as evident here, performing a hydrodelineation in a soft polar cataract is a lot simpler because all you need to do is go and bury into any part of the nucleus at to the depth of your choice and inject some fluid with some force and the resultant endonucleus will depend on that point at which you started to inject the fluid. Now let's move to seeing how do you perform a hydrodelineation with care and caution in a patient with a cataract which is significantly more dense. So let's now move to watching the hydrodelineation in a dense polar cataract. This is a patient with a posterior polar cataract with an associated dense nucleosclerosis. Now very often when faced with a dense nucleosclerosis, it's very difficult to perform the hydrodelineation. The main reason for this is the fact that you've got a dense nucleus and therefore burrowing into it, finding a plane and then injecting the fluid can be rather challenging. Let's demonstrate this in this following case. At the outset, following the completion of the rexis, some amount of viscoelastic is removed from the anterior chamber by pressing the posterior lip of the main incision. Now this decompression of the anterior chamber is an extremely important step. The reason for this being that when you're injecting fluid to go across the nucleus while attempting your hydrodelineation, we need space for the fluid to come out from the other side. Therefore, decompressing the anterior chamber offers adequate space for the fluid to come out and therefore negates any excessive pressure onto the posterior capsule, which could result in a blowout. We now proceed with the hydrodelineation. The hydrocannula is introduced into the anterior chamber deep to the rexis and is buried into the nucleus. Now because of the density of the nucleus, the surgeon then finds one particular place where he hitches the cannula against the nucleus and injects some fluid. Very often, as you can see here, there is no clear hydrodelineation wave that is seen. Assuming that you've completed it on one side, it is then repeated on the other side. This is how you perform a hydrodelineation in a dense nucleosclerosis. I do hope you found this video tutorial useful. Thank you.